Ladies and gents, welcome back to another video. It's been a while since we did one of these, but inside this package is an iPod Touch 4th Gen. This one is supposed to be running iOS 4. I think it's on 4.2.1, but I'm not 100% sure. Let's get it opened up and see what's inside. All right, here is our iPod Touch. This is definitely a 4th Gen. It is an eight gigabyte model and look how clean that back is. There are a few scratches, but as I'm sure most of you know, it does not take long for these iPods to get completely torn up on the back. I'll provide an example here. This is a third generation. Look at all those scratches compared to how nice and clean this fourth gen looks. Very nice to see here. And it is already turned on and charged. Look at that. We can slide to unlock, and this is definitely iOS 4. You can tell because of the green FaceTime icon. I forget which versions of iOS that came with, but it was changed shortly after to, I believe, a silver FaceTime icon. First things first, let's head into settings and see which version we have. So 4.1, that's a really early version of iOS 4. I don't think I've ever had an iPod Touch 4th Gen that has this low of an iOS version. Someone please leave me a comment down below. What version did the iPod Touch 4th Gen ship with? I don't know if it was 4.0 or 4.0.1. I have no idea. It might have been 4.1. Someone comment down below who uh, knows more about this than me. Here we've got our camera. This was, of course, the first iPod Touch to feature a camera. There were actually prototypes of a third gen with a camera. It had a camera right in the center, which was pretty interesting. If you find one of those, that is worth a lot of money. The camera's not very good. It is a 0.7 megapixel lens on the rear and a 0.3 megapixel on the front. You can see just how grainy those Pokemon cards are over there. So the fourth gen kind of changed the iPod Touch. Not only did it improve performance with the Apple A4 chip, but it added cameras. So now you could use FaceTime. I believe you could get Snapchat on here, Instagram. And for the first time, you could take photos and then upload them right away to whatever social media platform you wanted. Of course, iOS 4 did not have iMessage, but iOS 5 got that. And then you could update this iPod Touch and use iMessage to send pictures, videos, whatever you wanted. This 4th Gen iPod Touch was also the first to introduce the Retina display, which looks amazing, although it is very small here when we're used to these large phones. They just keep getting bigger and bigger. But here is a comparison between a 3rd Gen and a 4th Gen. So I wanted to turn off the flash there so we could get a better view of the screens. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom out on the iPhone and then we can get a really close look here at the retina display there on the left and the non-retina on the right. I mean, you can almost see the pixels here on this third gen iPod touch. I think a good way to show this is gonna be if we look at the wallpapers. So let's pick, I think this was the one Apple used to kind of show off their retina display. So I'll kind of put them side by side and you can see this fourth gen really shows those details and even the colors are a lot better. If you look at the text down here where it says set and cancel, you can really start to see the pixels there on the third gen. But overall, these devices are pretty similar. Um, the third gen has an older Samsung processor, but they both have 256 megabytes of RAM. Third gen is a great device and uh, it's actually easier to find these in 32 and 64 gigabytes compared to the fourth gen. But the star of the show is our iOS 4.1 fourth gen. This thing is gorgeous. Let me clean that display and let's see how good of condition it really is. All right, so let's check this out. This looks very clean. I know I've said this before, but usually these devices that have never been updated have also hardly ever been used kind of goes hand in hand. It's rare to find one. So it'd be really hard to find a fourth gen on iOS 4 
that was in rough condition because that means someone used it for quite some time and just never updated it. But going back to comparing this to the older iPods, the fourth gen just feels so much more premium. So you've got a dedicated speaker grill here on the bottom. The third, second, and the first gen didn't even have a speaker, but the second and third gen, it was just kind of tucked inside of the casing. It did not have its own dedicated speaker port there, which looks very nice. You also have these really nice buttons on the side, which was somewhat of an upgrade from this rocker switch here we have on the third gen. Let me turn the flash back on. So it just looks nicer. The power button actually got switched to the right side. I'm not sure why Apple did that. Um, and then we actually lost the little antenna. This was uh, present on the first, second, and third iPod touches, and this is where the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi antenna sits. Apple removed that on the fourth gen. I'm gonna assume that they placed that antenna towards the front here. Something else to note here on the fourth gen is actually the addition of a microphone. So you can see that little tiny hole there by the camera is a microphone. And that of course allowed for recording videos with audio and you could do voice memos, FaceTime calls without the need for headphones. On the first, second and third gen, you had to plug in headphones that had a microphone attached. These did not have a built-in mic. So the fourth gen was just, it was a big step up in terms of quality and uh, you got a bunch of features with the fourth gen. So performance really wasn't that much better because the A4 chip is maybe five to 10% more powerful than the Samsung third gen chip, I guess I'm gonna call it that. But you had double the pixels, actually I think four times the pixels, double horizontal, double vertical. And uh, a 10% increase in performance is not gonna translate very well when it comes to this retina display. The iPhone 4 had that problem and the iPad first gen had that problem as well. A4 chip is just really not powerful enough to drive these retina displays. So let me get on the Wi-Fi. I'm gonna see if the App Store works. It seems like it's kind of been hit or miss on some of these older versions of iOS, but we're gonna find out. Okay, I'm actually running into a glitch here and I don't know if it's gonna work in notes, but I need a capital letter for my Wi-Fi. So if we type nine and then J, it doesn't capitalize it. Like you see, I'm pushing that, but it doesn't stay blue. However, if I backspace, then it's lit up. I don't know what that is. I thought maybe you had to hold it down to type. <laughs> is this like an iOS 4.1 glitch where you can't type a capital letter? I can't even turn caps lock on. This is very strange. I can't input my Wi-Fi password because I need a capital letter. So I uh, guess we're not gonna be testing the app store on this one. All right, well, I think that's gonna conclude this video. Super clean iPod Touch 4th Gen, iOS 4.1. Again, someone comment down below what the first version of iOS to ship with the 4th Gen Touch was. I'd be very curious if it is in fact 4.1. All right, that's gonna do it for this video. As always, thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in another video.